Welcome back to Majora's Mask, this is part 85, and uh, this is like the sixth video that we've spent in this temple, good grief. Uh, I left this in at the beginning so you can see just how tedious it is, um, yeah, uh, to, I mean, especially like, oh, I really fail with these drums, it's kind of fun. Um, uh, yeah, when I was recording this, I played most of it, and then I took a break, and then this was, like, the start of my second day of playing. And... So, yeah, I, I saved at the Owl statue so that I could take a break from this game and then come back to it, which was nice. Um, and also look at walkthroughs and stuff. I did most of this temple without a walkthrough, but the walkthrough just made it easier to understand what was going on. And stuff, yeah. I mean, these, you know... If you really genuinely want to figure out these temples without a walkthrough, you... This, this is the the room where the last stray fairy is. I, I could not, for the life of me, figure it out. It's in the upside-down version of this room, and I could not, for the life of me, figure it out. But, like I said, I, I understand this temple a lot better now. Anyway, that's been, like, half of my commentary for the last couple of... Ugh. <laughs> I'm kind of glad that sped-up section is over, because that makes me very, like, frenetic. It makes me feel like I, like... I don't know. I love the taste of coffee, but like, I think I do not, I do not want to spend my life drinking coffee because just like, I do not like being caffeinated. I mean, it is a, it is a drug. It's not like te technically a strong drug, but it is a drug. So, um, it is something that affects your brain and you can get addicted to. So, you know, I, I like that. I like that extreme collision and knockback from that stupid skeleton fish. Um, these stray fairies are annoying. They, you, you know, you never seem to get them automatically. I mean, with some, like if you walk into the chest in just the right way, I think that's what it takes to get a stray fairy automatically. Also, I, I kept going through this temple and wanting magic upgrades, but I never got them. I never got my dang old magic. Uh, magic. I never got my dang old, um, I don't know, I'm mixing Homestar cartoons. Dang old public radio, I never got my tote bag. I've been obsessed with Jim Henson recently, and I, I was a big fan of The Muppet Show as a kid, and I've been reading his biography, Jim Henson, by Brian J. Jones, uh, recently, just because of spring break and the coronavirus and all that has given me a lot of time to read, and so... I'm very happy to have a book that I can just chow down on, but, um, yeah, just going back and, like, I rewatched The Great Muppet Caper on Saturday night, and that's a silly but fun movie. Um, I'm just obsessed with, like, the classic performers, like Jerry Nelson, Frank Oz, Richard Hunt, Dave Goles, all those guys, and like watching classic episodes of The Muppet Show and Sesame Street, and trying to see if I can name all those performers. And it's so funny to think about like the relationship that Frank has had with Miss Piggy, and like how she's such a pop culture icon and basically sex symbol. It's kind of kind of more of an ironic sex symbol than an actual sex symbol, but so like I don't sex symbol is like a term from like the '60s. Like people don't say that anymore, but we still have them in our popular culture. But just like the th thinking of it, that like f f Frank Oz performing Miss Piggy with all his like pent up like female stereotypes or whatever, but not even that, just like trying to create an enjoyable character, but like just just putting his heart into like this like falsetto every time, just like s practically screaming in his falsetto. Like, you know how exhausting it is for a grown man to use their falsetto? Like, I don't know. Frank Oz is just a legend. Like his his characters are all so amazing, but like if you think if you actually try to do like the, a voice for Animal or Cookie Monster, you know, without good technique, like like it just like destroys your vocal cords. Like I can't figure out like how 
Matt Chapman does the voices of Strong Bad and, and whatever without destroying his vocal cords. So yeah, we just went through a pretty familiar room and got a stray fairy and I didn't talk about it at all. But yeah, we kept passing that stray fairy before. I just saw that platform with a bunch of rupees on it and I thought, Oh, that's just a bunch of rupees. That can't be anything important. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, speaking of throat, oh, that's going to make my throat hurt for the rest of the day. Um, uh, so we got that stray fairy with little fanfare, and then this is number 14 out of 15. There's like a crystal switch in this room that I ignored the last time because it's like underneath the part of this room that you can actually walk on. But using the blast mask, you can interact with it or whatever. Um, and then here we go. This is... This is the final room when you go through this temple normally, and it's the final room when you go through this temple upside down, so that makes it pretty cool. Oh yeah, we're about to hit the crystal switch. I'm sorry, I got confused. Um, defeat one of these masked rhino beetles. No, we're not going to defeat him. And, yep, there's straight fairy number 14, like I said. Um... Let my throat recover. This has been an interesting temple. An interesting temple to play while the current global situation has unfolded. I don't know. I hate speaking in all these mysterious terms. But like when something like this happens, it's on everybody's minds all the time. Excuse me. And I don't know. I'm, I'm looking forward to this being over. But like, oh, yay. But I don't know what I don't know what I was gonna say about that. But here we are in the inverted temple, uh, the upside down temple. Inverted, it sounds so special. And instead of, I could just get that chest with a hook shot, but I'm going to do the stupid snowhead temple technique. And this is four times speed, so he's drifting down pretty slowly. Uh, but I kind of love that, just like. Drifting down slowly using the Deku flower, just anxiously like, okay, okay, I'm gonna maneuver myself in there eventually. That's all the stray fairies. And then we come back to this footage in just a second. Oh, yeah. Here, so here I got all the stray fairies, but I genuinely didn't know how to finish the temple and get the secret mask. And we're back in this room, and I thought going in this staircase was a thing, but it's not a thing. The designers are like, nope, you can't go in there. You're There's an invisible wall. So um, now we finally figured out. So here we are. We're in this room, and then we take this side and uh, or exit or whatever, and we end up back in room number one of the very, uh, the very first room of the whole temple. And before, I was trying to fight this, like, Armos or whatever, and, and it was super annoying because Tattle was locking on to something that was way up on the ceiling. What what could be way up on the ceiling? Oh yeah, it's that chest that we got earlier. So now we are going to finally make our way to the final two rooms of this temple. Um, ugh. uh. Here's the second Igor. We saw him earlier because we were just kind of standing in this room, standing outside. Or, yeah. So, that's so... I, I love the idea... I don't know, here's the thing. I love Zelda temples, the way that they're designed, that you see things once, but you have to come back to them in order to fully understand them. And you go through the temple and you unlock, you get these different items and you unlock certain abilities so that you're like, oh, like that thing that I saw in the very first room, and that's what that was for. It's, it's interesting. I like the idea of uh, designing a temple because like, I, to me, it's like a story. Like you read the story like once and you're like, okay. And then you go back to it and you read into it and you know a few more details. And, um, and you go back to things at the beginning and you're like, oh, that makes more sense now. You kind of, you ha have to have a more, you have to read something multiple times and just kind of have a more analytical perspective of it. I don't know. 
you're obviously not going to, it's harder to have an analytical perspective of it the first time you experience something, but that's how I, I like the way these dungeons are designed so that you go back through the first couple of rooms a couple times and you're like, okay, that makes more sense. I feel like later Zelda games have more like linear dungeons, like as far as I can think, like like they're not all designed like that, like like Lake Lakehead Temple from I can't even remember. Yeah, Lake Lakebed. Lakebed Temple from Twilight Princess comes to mind as a very linear temple. So uh here's the boss door. So next time for boss time. Next time for boss time. So thank you very much for watching this video of Helium Lemon 15. I hope it brightened your day. I haven't said that in a while. And uh, I'll see you on the next episode of Majora's Mask for hijinks and capers. Take care, everybody, and goodbye.